Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'll be fixing something you should never, a broken MacBook keyboard. What should be a simple and straightforward repair is so outrageously complicated on newer MacBooks, I have never even heard of Apple doing it. That's because it's riveted into place, so they just replace half the laptop instead. From my experience with the 2017 MacBook, this included a keyboard, top case and battery. If you're doing this out of warranty, it gets expensive. Keyboard failures on MacBooks are quite common. Apple has a repair program from laptops ranging from 2015 to 2019. My 2013 model is outside that range and isn't working because it's been physically damaged, not because of any design flaw. If you have a newer MacBook, this process will be very similar. The only damaged key on mine is the spacebar. It only works when pressed directly in the center. Press it on the sides and it won't register unless you press on it really hard. Definitely not ideal. This key is damaged from the underside as a result of someone prying up the battery. This keyboard is dented right below the spacebar. It has three contacts that register a button press, two of which don't work properly. I have attempted to resolve it many times, but this issue just keeps coming back. So I'll need to do the dreaded keyboard replacement. I've purchased a replacement online for only $20. What the listing doesn't mention is how hard it will be to remove the old keyboard that's riveted into place and somehow find a way to install this new one. But that's what we're going to find out. One thing that's going to make this easier is my iFixit ProTech Toolkit. Thanks iFixit for sponsoring this video. Backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty, this is a toolkit that means business and is equipped with just about everything you might need for device repair. Visit iFixit.com slash Hugh Jeffries or the link below to get yours today. We'll begin by unfastening 10 of Apple's own pentalobe security screws from the bottom cover of the laptop. Removing that bottom cover, we get our first look inside the device. You might notice a few things that don't look original. That's because this laptop has been repaired in the past. In fact, the battery is brand new. I'll start disassembling the laptop down to a point where I can access the keyboard. After unplugging the battery, I'll start taking out the speakers. Although to do that, I'll need to remove the SSD and a few other cables that are in the way. On the logic board, there are quite a few flex cables that will need to be detached. These connect to various things such as the display, fans, Wi-Fi card and keyboard. However, a few of these cables are quite well hidden due to their placement or the fact that they're covered in black tape. Once they've all been unplugged, it's time to unfasten the necessary screws to remove the logic board. A few of the screws around the fans don't actually need to come out for the logic board to be removed. This means you can leave the fans and heatsink still attached. I did find a few more cables to detach that I missed earlier. With that, the logic board can be lifted up and out of the MacBook Pro. I'll also need to detach the daughter board which contains the Wi-Fi card and a few of the ports. The battery will come out next. Thankfully it's a replacement so it'll come out easy. An original battery is held in with incredibly strong adhesive. The top section of the battery in this early 2013 MacBook Pro proves it's possible to attach a battery with screws, but yet even it is only half screwed in with the remainder using glue. With the battery out of place, we can finally see the damage done to the back of the keyboard that I mentioned earlier. The black section is the backlight for the keys. We'll need to remove it and put it aside because we'll reuse it. It's stuck to the top case using adhesive, so we'll need to pry it up carefully so that we don't damage it. Removing the backlight reveals the keyboard at last. If you've repaired a laptop in the past, you'd likely think this wasn't that hard to get to, so you can just unscrew it, right? Well, there's only three screws holding it in, but after removing them, that didn't free the keyboard. At a closer inspection, you'll see the other 96 screws have been replaced with metal rivets. This anti-repair mechanism isn't going to stop me from replacing the keyboard. But before attempting to remove the keyboard itself, I'll first attach the trackpad, as I don't want to rip its cable while working with the keyboard. Things are about to get messy. With no screws, there is only one way to get it out, using force. 
I'll tape up the back and also put on some eye protection just in case any rivets go flying during the next stage. So what does it take to get up a MacBook keyboard? Well, it's time to find out. Starting with the Jimmy tool and some pliers, I began pulling up a small area that I'll use to grab onto with my hands and pull the keyboard the rest of the way out. While undertaking this, I would recommend removing the display or hanging it over the edge of the table like I'm doing here. I did find one more screw holding it in, which brings the total number of screws to just four. Proceed with caution as MacBooks bite. Its razor sharp keyboard is not to be messed with without gloves. It's time to put those muscles to work and tear this keyboard from the frame. Well, that's certainly one way to get it out. I'll clean off the residual keys from my workspace before proceeding to prep the top case for a new keyboard. You'll notice by ripping out the keyboard, we have only removed the head of most of the rivets. However, some have come out and left a hole like this. The next stage is to remove the remaining rivets. Using some side cutters, I can grip the post and twist it out. After doing so, a screw can be later put in its place. This looked like an easy way and worked for the first two I tried it on. However, every other rivet following just rounded off the head or got cut off entirely. It seemed like I needed another approach. So I grabbed a flathead screwdriver and a hammer and knocked them out that way. This worked on every one except a couple that sheared off without coming out, but it was a much better approach than the side cutters. What we're left with is a bunch of removed rivets. These will be replaced with a new set of screws, just like the ones found in the 2012 or earlier MacBook Pro. These were included with my new keyboard. Speaking of that new keyboard, it's time for it to be installed. I'll position it into place before starting to attach all of the screws. With just under 100 to install, this is gonna take a while. A few holes will be missed as the rivets are still stuck inside, but as long as the majority are installed, no one will notice. With so many screws, Apple's choice of riveting in the keyboard may have been to speed up manufacturing. While I don't know anything about how the laptop is made, you wouldn't want someone to hand install 100 screws, or rivets for that matter, for the keyboard. If Apple made a robot to disassemble iPhones, wouldn't they be able to make one that assembles the screws in the keyboard? Well, maybe it's just cheaper to use rivets and not screws, but I can imagine the difference in cost would only be a few cents. Of course, it adds up over millions of sales, but factoring in how much these laptops sell for, I'd expect to be able to replace my keyboard easily. If I had to speculate, it's probably a bit of both, but we'll likely never know. With all of those screws installed in the keyboard, it's time to get the backlight reattached to the back before we start reassembling the rest of the computer. I'll clean under the trackpad before reinstalling it. If you're having clicking issues, there's a good chance there's just debris under it interfering with its function. Simply removing the trackpad and cleaning underneath it might resolve your issues. Proceeding, I can reinstall both the daughter board and logic board back into the laptop. After it's positioned into place, all of the Torx screws can be fastened, securing it down. Following, I can plug in the fan, webcam cable, and the three antennas for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. After attaching the interconnect cable between the two boards, I can flip over to the other side of the laptop and attach the display cable, keyboard, and trackpad. We can finally reinstall the battery, 
As I said earlier, this is a brand new replacement that I sourced out from iFixit, so it doesn't need to be replaced as it only has two battery cycles. Once it's loosely into position, I'll reinstall the speakers before firmly pressing the battery down in place. This just ensures correct alignment for the battery cells. With the laptop almost looking complete, there's only a few more things to plug in, like the headphone jack, the speakers, the display backlight, and of course, the SSD. I'll secure in the final screws for both speakers, as well as the battery connection. Before closing everything up, I'll give the internals of the laptop a wipe down with a microfiber cloth before reinstalling the bottom cover. And with that, we're done. So this is it. After a battle with this laptop's unremovable keyboard, I was victorious in replacing it. What we're left with is this laptop I can finally sell on to a new owner. The replacement keyboard works just like the original and goes to show securing the keyboard with screws was always an option and that it has no negative impact to the end user. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.